guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to show you how to ombre chunky to fine glitter using mod podge as your adhesive you're going to find all the products that you see in this video listed and linked down below in the description box you might even find some discount codes for you there as well so that's enough chit chat for me let's go ahead and get started All right, you guys, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded tumbler. If you need help on how to prep your tumblers, I will link a video down below that I think you'll find helpful. I've already spray painted my cup with a flat white spray paint, just a nice thin coat of that. I let that dry, and now I'm doing a nice even coat of Dreamy Lavender. This is a gloss spray paint from Rust-Oleum. And again, we wanna do nice thin coats. It's better to do two or three super thin coats rather than one extra heavy coat where you get a lot of drips and things like that. Um, I will link the ventilator system that I'm using down below in the description box. I finally decided that I do like it. We did have to extend the hose on it to get it to work properly, but spraying straight ahead at this thing, it does really remove the paint and the fumes from my shop pretty well. I'm not 100% impressed, but it worked well enough. <laughs> All right, so anyway, once we get our tumbler base painted and that paint is dry, which only took about 30 minutes or so, we're going to be using Illumilite's Amazing Sealer as our adhesive today. This formula is pretty much just like Mod Podge adhesive. Uh, I just prefer this one because it has less of an odor. I am going to be using one of those Mod Pod brushes though. I really like these for spreading on adhesive like this because I get nice even coats with no lines like sometimes you would struggle with with a regular paintbrush. I want to get really solid uh, coverage with the adhesive here, but I also don't want it to be too much. Um, we're also working pretty quickly because this stuff does dry kind of fast. It is really cold in my shop though. So if you find that you struggle with this stuff drying too fast on you, maybe try to lower the heat um, in your workspace if you're able to do that. All right, so I'm just working to get nice, even coverage with our adhesive here. We don't want to see any kind of pooling or lines in the glue because you will see that through the glitter. And so once we've got nice, even coverage of our adhesive all over our tumbler, I'm ready to start applying my glitter. In this video, I'm going to show you two examples of chunky to fine ombres. The first one, we're going to do two colors that are similar to each other that are easier to blend. And then we will also do two colors that are very contrasting and not so easy to blend. I always prefer to do a chunky to fine ombre or even a medium chunky to fine uh, just because I find like it's easier to blend them actually. So we're gonna start with our chunky glitter and anytime I have the opportunity to, I like to put the chunky glitter up at the top. This is because it's a lot easier to finish out that chunky glitter on the top end of my tumbler rather than the bottom end where I'm gonna probably have to do a lot of sanding and finishing work to get it smooth. All right, so I'm getting full coverage around the very top of my top rim of my cup and then I've got my cup tilted at a 45 degree angle or even steeper if you'd like and I'm just very lightly tapping out some glitter very slowly letting it fall where it may and cascading down the side of my cup. Um, it's around this time where I'll usually try to determine how far I want that chunky glitter to go down the side of my cup. Do I want it to go all the way down end to end and fade from very top to very bottom? Or maybe do I want that fade to end a couple inches from the bottom rim? Uh, so if you need to sprinkle on a little more either by hand or you know just lightly sprinkling after you do your tilted cascade application, that helps as well. For my fine glitter, I am using a very fine glitter. Uh, this is beautiful. This is Lover from Peachy Olive Glitters. First color was Bertha. I'm going to link these down below. Uh, but anyway, same thing. We're getting full coverage all the way around the bottom rim. 
And then once we've got that going, we're going to tilt our cup at a 45 degree angle or steeper and very lightly tap our glitter shaker here to release a very small amounts of glitter at, at a time, letting it cascade down the side of our cup, okay? Uh, the trickiest part about these 30 ounce traditionals is that curve through the center. So what you're going to find is <laughs> you're not going to be able to fade past that curve. So what you might end up having to do is really do an extreme tilt on your tumbler and then shake really lightly from up high to fade beyond that curve. Okay, so that's typically how I would handle uh, the curve on a 30 ounce traditional tumbler shape like this okay so you can see that that lover glitter is getting about an inch up into the top section from that center curve all right and we're going to do two coats of glitter on this so don't worry too much if your first try is a mess we get a second chance okay i'm going to tap off all the excess glitter here with a pair of scissors and then we will go back with our chunky glitter. In all of my glitter application videos, I always talk about starting with very light coverage. We can always build up, we just can't take away. So while we're establishing this blend here through the middle of our cup, we wanna apply it very lightly until we've established the length of our fades, where we want things to blend, and all of that, okay? If we just pile it on really quickly, we're gonna have a much harder time blending. So here we've got a pretty good fade going. You could see how similar these colors actually are once they're on the cup. You can't really tell where one starts and one begins. I let that glitter dry for at least an hour, okay? Again, my workspace is really cold. Your Mod Podge may dry much faster. And then I'm going to apply a second coat of adhesive right over that glitter. Make sure that you aggressively tap off your excess glitter before moving on to this step. Otherwise, you're going to get it kind of grouping up and piling up with the adhesive and we don't want that to happen. So aggressively tap off that excess glitter and then go in for this second coat. This second coat is going to provide beautiful depth with our ombre glitter, especially with that chunky, and it gives us a second opportunity to get a better blend. There's going to be a lot of sparkle when you do this two coat technique. I used to do this a lot when I first started making cups and I quit doing it because it takes longer. Uh, I really like the results that I get with an epoxy method ombre, but I do understand that that doesn't work for everybody. So if you're just starting out, this might be an easier technique for you because you get the two chances to get a really good blend. You'll notice that I am not applying adhesive on the very bottom of my tumbler just because we already have good coverage there. I don't need to apply a second coat of glitter along that very bottom side of my cup, okay? We also don't wanna to apply too much adhesive to where it gets like clumpy or gloopy, okay? We've just got a nice sheer, solid, consistent coat of adhesive over our glitter. And then we're gonna go back in and do pretty much the same thing we did in the first half. So starting with full coverage around the very top rim here with my chunky glitter first, we're going to then move into our angled application where we lightly tap and allow it to cascade down the side, okay? Again, really, we're just repeating the first steps uh, that we did in the first half, but this time I'm learning from any mistakes that I might have made in that first coat um, because, you know, the different glitter cuts and different cup shapes all have different behaviors when you're applying um, you know, an ombre blend of glitter. So it's going to take you some time and practice to learn, you know, all those little nuances between different cuts of glitter and different shapes of cups. That's why I wanted to do this demonstration with a 30 ounce traditional because I find that this particular shape of cup tends to be a little more challenging when you're really trying to get a good ombre blend that's going to be different about this second coat is I'm not going to be layering the glitter as much as I did with the first one. Remember in the first coat we did really light coats to start and then build it up. 
with this second coat, I'm going to really only do like one pass of my glitter. I'm not going to go back and forth too much. Okay, so I really want to make sure that I got that chunky fade exactly how far down and how thick I want it to be. And then I'm going to go in with my fine glitter and just fill in the blanks there. Once I'm pretty happy with how everything looks, I'm going to go back in with that fine cut of glitter and I'm just going to really let it rip. I want to make sure that I have absolute coverage everywhere I need to. Okay, and then once we're done with that, I'm going to aggressively tap off the excess and I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours uh, before I epoxy over it. All right, and now I want to show you guys a more challenging ombre. This is a high contrast blend here. So we've got a very chunky silver mix. This is called Smolder, and then I've got an extra fine white. I've mixed that extra fine white with a little bit of a ultra fine silver. Okay, so I have one part silver bells and three parts headwig. Those are the glitter colors we use to make this really pretty silver flash white. Okay, and we're going to apply our adhesive the same way we did the first time. So I wanna get a good amount on there and I'm going to spread it out with my Mod Podge brush to make sure I have consistent solid coverage with no lines in the adhesive. All right, and then once I've got my adhesive applied, I'm ready to start with my glitter. We're going to address this very bottom rim first. I have a matching fine cut of silver that goes with my chunky glitter. This particular design, I wanted to have the chunky glitter on the bottom instead of the top. And so I don't have to deal with chunky, <laughs> chunky glitter on the very bottom of my cup. I'm gonna first coat it with a matching color uh, fine cut silver. All right, this is gonna make my life much more easier in the long run to do this. I had a rogue piece of pink glitter in there, so I'm just gonna get that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then once we've got that bottom or the bottom of my cup covered, we're going to move on to our chunky. With this glitter, we're going to be really conservative because this is a very chunky mix. I'm still going to get full coverage around the very bottom part of my rim here. Um, and then again, we're going to angle our cup at about a 45 degree angle and then very, very lightly tap our glitter from our glitter shaker and allow it to cascade down the side of our cup. I don't want the silver to come up too far on this particular cup because it's a short cup and I don't want the silver to be too overpowering so that I have room for my decal later, all right? So very lightly just tapping it on. Don't worry if it's absolutely perfect on this go round because we're gonna have a second opportunity later. Really make sure you take your time with this. I do have the video sped up just a little bit, but I am going really, really slow, okay? And always remember, less is more in these first coats because we can always add more, we just can't really take away. If I have any glitter that came down too far, I just use my dental pick to kind of rearrange it or just remove it altogether. All right, and then once I'm pretty happy with the, like, length of my fade with that silver, I'm going to move on to the fine glitter. Same as we did before, getting solid coverage up at the top rim and then doing a steep angle this time, probably more of a steep angle than 45 degrees. I would really kind of get your cup down there and then lightly tapping that glitter mix. This is a really good shot that shows just how gently I'm tapping and releasing very small amounts of glitter and cascading them down the side of my cup. You wanna aim for that top rim, okay, and then just let it fall down into that chunky. So this is looking pretty good so far. I did want to soften the blend between that white and silver. So I have a that same fine silver that I used on my bottom rim. I'm holding my cup at a very steep angle and I'm lightly sprinkling that silver, aiming for the very bottom rim and letting it cascade down into the white. This was just to kind of soften the blend between the white and the chunky silver. If you didn't want to have that look and you really wanted the chunky to stand out against the fine white, you could forego that step. 
And lastly, we're just going to really let it rip with the white glitter so that we can get a really beautiful blend into that silver section there. And then once we get done with that, I'm going to aggressively tap off the excess and I'm gonna let this dry for at least an hour before I move on to the next step. Now, I have to say, if I could go back in time, I probably would not have done a second coat of glitter over this first one because I thought my first one really did look nice. Uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, I just went in to do a second coat. I don't know. I probably didn't need to. But anyway, um, we're going to do a second coat just like we did the first one here. And again, the second coat really isn't always necessary. It's just going to give you a second chance to further the blend. And it's also going to give you more depth in your glitter because you do have those two layers. Okay. So before we went in for this second coat, I did aggressively tap off all that excess glitter and then we went right in for this coat. You do want to make sure that that first coat of glitter is completely dry uh, before you do this. So <laughs> you'll know that it's completely dry because your glitter should feel a little bit crunchy, okay? So after I got my adhesive all applied there nicely, I just went in with that second round of glitter. I applied it exactly the same way as I applied the first. Um, but again, learning from my mistakes from the first time and correcting those in the second coat. All right, and so once I was done glittering, I just again tapped off the excess and I let this dry for at least two to three hours before I sealed it. I did seal it with Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint and I did a pretty generous coat. One coat is all I needed. Um, my glitter pretty much stuck in place uh, because of how we applied it and because we were sure to tap off the excess. I did not seal the pink and opal one because it wasn't necessary. Those two colors are so similar, it wouldn't matter if I had some movement. Um, and again, there isn't a bunch of excess glitter left on my cup that would move around at the time of epoxy application. So both of these cups are nice and dry. Again, I know that my glitter is completely dry because it feels crunchy. There's no movement there. And I have 60 milliliters of epoxy mixed. But before I apply that, I want to make sure that my cups are completely level on my turner. So I've got a level that I'm placing against the very bottom of my tumbler and I'm going to gauge how level they are from there, okay? It doesn't matter if my turner's level or my table's level. The only thing that matters is that the bottom of that cup is level on the turner. You don't want to measure whether it's level against the side of your tumbler because that's not really relevant in the epoxy application here. It has to be held against the bottom of the cup, make sure it's nice and level. And the reason that we want to double check, particularly on cups like this, is we are gonna do a pretty heavy epoxy application here. And if my cup is even just a little bit unlevel, I'm gonna get a muffin top or a fat booty, okay? So we wanna make sure that these are nice and straight on the turner. Again, I've got 60 milliliters of epoxy that I've already mixed here, and that's going to be enough to coat these two cups. This is a 12 ounce skinny straight and a 30 ounce traditional. If I was just doing the 30 ounce traditional, I think 30 milliliters of epoxy would be just fine. All right, so we're gonna get nice smooth application here. One of the questions I get a lot is how do you deal with uh, fish eyes or divots on your tumbler? Now, I, my answer is usually like having divots on the first coat is pretty common because there's a lot of like pits and spaces through that glitter for the epoxy to rest into and it's not going to be smooth on the first coat. Absolutely not. <laughs> but um, one thing that I think is really overlooked and is super important is how smooth and consistently you're applying that epoxy. You really should not feel the, the surface of your cup under your hands as you're going over that epoxy coat. It's your hands should glide smoothly over that epoxy and on all surfaces of the cup. All right, and I think fish eyes are more often caused by not too much epoxy or not very smooth application. 
Um, it's very rarely that it's contaminants or something else that it's causing those fish eyes, okay? So usually when I'm getting them, it's because I didn't apply a thick enough coat or I didn't take the time to really smooth it out. Once I got my cup fully coated there, I'm going to hit it with my torch. So after I get my torching done, uh, I am going to hand sprinkle in some of that same chunky glitter just to further extend my blend a little bit and also to add some depth and to correct any places where I might not have gotten that blend high enough up my cup, okay? All right, and so I let that coat dry for about four to six hours and then I came right back in for a second coat. My second coat here, I've got 30 milliliters of mixed epoxy and that was enough to coat both of these for the second coats. I let that second coat dry for about eight to 12 hours before we moved on to the next step. Now for our next step, I did actually go in and do a third coat of epoxy, okay? Um, before I did my sanding. The reason I did a third coat before sanding was because when I'm working with chunkier glitters, I might as well just do a third coat and sand after the third coat because I'm going to have to do less sanding than if I just went in to do it after the second coat, okay? So I let my third coat dry for about 8 to 12 hours and then I went in to do my normal sanding routine. I sanded the rim, I sanded the sides, I sanded the bottom rim. You guys have seen me do that many times before and if you haven't, I would backtrack to some of my more um, beginner videos and things like that where we really go more into depth on the sanding process. Once my cup was nice and smooth, I rinsed it off with some dish soap and water and applied my decal. I already cut and weeded my decal and I'm applying it here using the hinge method, being sure to measure twice so I only have to cut once. Make sure it's nice and balanced on that tumbler. Once I got my decal on there, I was ready to do my final coats of epoxy. I want to tell you, I forgot to film me putting the decal on the white and silver one. I just used one of these really cool sticker cows from Banff Custom Creations. I will link this down below. This is basically just a clear sticker that's printed with opaque ink and you could just peel and stick it onto your tumbler. No need to seal it, okay? So very simple and easy. Here I am putting the final coats of epoxy on my tumbler. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to apply the final coat and then I'm gonna let that coat dry for about four to six hours and then go straight into a, another coat, okay? So we'll do back-to-back -back final coats and this really helps to get a nice smooth finish. We did all the sanding that we needed to do after the third coat, okay? So once we put the decal on and we go in for these two final coats, we should not have any additional sanding left to do, okay? In rare cases, I might get like a bug flown in there or something that would cause me to have to go back before that fifth and final coat. But generally, I will do the fourth and fifth coat back to back to really give me a drama-free finish. Anytime we have to take the cup off and handle it for any sort of reason, that always opens the door to you know debris being on the cup or things like that or contaminants so that's why i like to do the back-to-back -back, uh final coats also i very rarely can get away with doing one coat over a decal and being done i don't know about you but a fourth coat is never enough <laughs> <laughs> I always end up having to do that fifth coat and once I figured out that I really could just do these back to back, uh, it made my life so much easier. So if you're having trouble getting um, you know, a really nice smooth final coat, try the back to back method. Let me know how it works out for you. Anyway, that, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this is really beginner level information, however, I get asked this question a lot about doing an ombre with chunky to fine glitter and i realized that i've never really focused on that on the channel before so i hope you guys enjoyed this let me know what you thought in the comments and if you liked my video please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel i upload new videos every wednesday and saturday thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon
And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also, be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course, subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.